Anybody still, anybody still listening to the, that Kanye West record from last year, Jesus is Lord? Jesus is Lord. Ba, ba. Those horn parts in there, like I just think that's really, if you don't make pancakes to Kanye West's Jesus is Lord, I'm not really sure if your pancakes are blessed. <music> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to this week's installment of Songs We Pray. Listen, I'm on a mission today, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dive right into the song that we're talking about, which is All Hail King Jesus by Jeremy Riddle. Now the chorus of this song has some very strong, very uh, provocative language. All hail King Jesus, all hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Each time that we sing this song, I find myself being smacked in the face just by the sheer distance between the worldview and the experience of the very early church and our own. We don't really know lords. We don't really know kings. Yes, we're familiar with celebrity, you know, people that we revere, and we're familiar with leaders and legislation. So, so people and processes that we as individuals and as a society follow, well, because it makes our lives together in society better. But we choose those leaders and we invest them with their authority. At least that's the way democracy is supposed to work. No one who holds public office in our context here in Canada holds it forever, and nor do they do so without public accountability. I think that we can all agree that none of our mayors, premiers, or prime ministers are royalty. But lords, kings, these are people who lead by divine right. None of their authority comes from a group of followers voting them into power. They are to be followed and obeyed regardless of whether you agree with their public policy or not. As we end up affirming in our worship songs quite often, God is the, the King of Kings. He's the, the Lord of Lords. And this means that ultimately he is the ruler of all rulers. And this is a very comforting thought. It's why when I read Romans 13, 1, I do so with great hope. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And knowing that God is ultimately behind the wheel, I mean, it makes me feel way more secure in life. But God is not just the king of kings. No, he rules over us all, not indirectly, but directly. He is my king. And in Jesus Christ, God's rule shows up in surprising and yet very real and concrete ways. In the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus gives really clear instructions about how we're to treat both our friends and our enemies. And then he follows up these teachings by saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Now, I don't know uh, who was calling Jesus Lord at this point in history, but we, we do know that the early church was calling him Lord not very long after this. The statement, Jesus is Lord, or in Greek, Kyrios Jesus, was what we might call one of the earliest creeds of the church, a very short statement that carried a lot in terms of unlocking what the church actually believed about Jesus. He was not only to be believed in, he was to be followed. Before Christians were called Christians, they were called followers of the way. Jesus is not merely teacher or rabbi, Jesus is Lord. And this early creedal affirmation shows up in many different places in the New Testament, many. But just to show one example, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Um, are we still talking about that song? Like, why am I saying all this? Good question. Because there has been a recent kind of rebirth in songs in our catalog that talk about the kingship of God, which is great. But if, if we gloss over the actual meaning of Jesus as king, then we potentially miss well, some of the impact in our worship. This song in particular is full of other really beautiful imagery about things like the atoning nature of Christ's death, 
and the revolutionary impact of his resurrection, but it might be enough, just enough for us to camp out on the words, all hail King Jesus, and just sit in the realization of our allegiance to the one true King of not only the universe, but of you and of me personally. This is a truly subversive statement, and many Christians have died. Some, sadly, still do, for declaring Jesus to be their ultimate authority. During the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, a saying much more popular than Jesus is Lord was Caesar, the Roman emperor, Caesar is Lord. You can probably guess how excited Caesar was to hear of this newfound competitor for lordship. There is a cost to following King Jesus. It costs us everything. And yet it is the best way in which that we can follow. It is both true and life-giving as Jesus himself, you know, the way, the truth, and the life, as he implies in John 14, 6. Now, we started singing All Hail King Jesus together in the middle of lockdown in our part of the world, mid-March 2020. So I, I grew kind of used to hearing, well, the song prayed in isolation, if you will. There were not many voices in the room. But we've since prayed it together uh, when our in-person services returned. And I gotta tell you, there is just something about hearing that bridge sung all around you that really kind of changes its impact. Let every knee come bow before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess that he is Lord. Lift up your shout and let us join with all of heaven singing holy. Now, if we haven't lost you yet in this video, if you're still with me, can I just take a moment here at the end just to encourage you about something? Maybe you've been a part of, of a church for a really long time. Or maybe you're just exploring faith for the first time, really, over these last few months. An online church, and that's really all you know. Maybe Jesus truly is the Lord of your life, or maybe you're just checking things out. And either way, listen, welcome. We're glad you're here. If Moncton Wesleyan is your home church, then really, I'm talking to you here for just a second. Now, for some, this will be a reminder but I think for others, it might actually genuinely be some new information. So listen, worship is not something you watch. It is something you join. You watch Netflix and you join our worship services. And I don't just mean you join like you might join a conference call and then put your phone on mute. Worship is participatory. Whether you're worshiping with us in the room here at MW or in your own living room, the worship team is not performing these songs for you. We are leading you in them. These are songs that we pray, all of us together, through contemplation and through singing, with our bodies and with our voices, every knee, every tongue, lifting up our shout to the one King who is the King of all Kings, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So together we sing, all hail King Jesus.